Welcome to the McAllister Report. We join John McAllister, top football evaluator, as he shares wisdom and interviews coaches and athletes from around the country. Enjoy today's podcast. Hello, this is the John McAllister Report, and I'm John McAllister. Today I have a, a coach on, a college coach from Indiana State University named Mike Bath. I watched Mike Bath as a 17-year-old high school senior that's from Salina. I watched him play football at Miami University in Oxford. I saw him coach football at Miami, and I saw him be a head coach at the college level, interim head coach at uh, Kent State when he, Miami played Kent State. I've watched him grow up. I respect him so much. Great family guy, very good quarterback, very good co uh, coach, an offensive coordinator, and very class act. So if you'll sit back and enjoy my video podcast today with Mike Bath, the OC from Indiana State University. <laughs> Today, I said earlier, my guest is Mike Bath. And as I said earlier today, Mike Bath, I watched him grow up. I've watched him as a 17-year-old at Salina. I watched him as a college football player at University or at Miami of Ohio. I watched him coach as an assistant. And I watched him coach as an interim head coach at Miami, at Miami of Ohio when they played Kent State. So I've known Coach Bath for a long time. Coach Bath, Michael, how are you doing today? John, I'm doing great, man. It's uh, it's always my pleasure to see you, buddy. It's, it's me too. In fact, we just talked off the air. I had to stop or we'd be talking all day. <laughs> but it's really good. Mike, tell me where you are now. Uh, now I'm at uh, Indiana State University. And it's in Terre Haute, Indiana, right? Terre Haute, Indiana. Yes, sir. Okay, good. We'll come back to it. Okay, because I want to talk about you. Let's okay. come back. You started at Salina in high school. You played at Miami, and then I, I traced you till till uh, Miami of Ohio. And then tell us where were you've been since then, because you have a couple interesting stories to tell. Yeah, I, so I guess uh, you know after I got done playing, um, uh, ended up I was coaching high school ball there for a little bit back in Salina, um, and then I uh, had the opportunity, uh, Terry Hepner uh, offered me the opportunity to go back to uh, Miami as a GA. Started off as a, a defensive line GA uh, for a year. And then uh, uh, Coach uh, Hepner went to uh, Indiana University and uh, they hired Shane Montgomery. And I uh, stayed on with him as a GA for a year, working with quarterbacks. Uh, became the tight ends coach there for three years. And then uh, Coach Montgomery uh, was let go. I went to Ashley University with Lee Owens for uh, two seasons in 2009-2010. Uh, uh, Donnie Treadwell uh, was hired on as a head coach at Miami University after the 2010 season and brought me back. Uh, I think over the course of three seasons, I've co I coached uh, <laughs> a little bit of everything, uh, quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs. And then, um, you know, as you alluded to, I was, uh, you know, in mid-year mid of that year in 2013, uh, uh, was made the interim head coach after Coach um, uh, Treadwell was let go and then uh, ended up at uh, after that season at the University of Wyoming for five years. Uh, working with uh, Craig Bull out there. Um, started off as a running backs and fullbacks coach. Uh, ended up as uh, running backs, fullbacks, special, uh, co-special teams coordinator. I uh, did that uh, my last couple seasons out there. Uh, went to Western Michigan there from there for uh, three seasons. Uh, spent my last season as a co-offense coordinator and uh, running backs. And then uh, just finished up my first year here as the uh, offense coordinator quarterbacks coach. That's really good. And I know you speak highly of the head coach at Indiana State. And he's got a, a long lineage a history of coaches in his family. All right. Tell me. Yeah. That. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt Mallory is a solid the earth guy. And, uh, you know, I, I played at Miami, which is where his uh, father played at, but then also was the head coach there uh, a long time ago, mid 70s. 
And uh, so I had the opportunity when I was a player to uh, get to know his father pretty well. And then uh, it's kind of funny, my first day out on the road recruiting in uh, 2006, uh, I started off at Warren Central High School in uh, Indianapolis, uh, 6 a.m. workout. And uh, this guy from Illinois comes up to me and it's Kurt Mallory. And uh, so we uh, spent the entire day uh, that day, the next day with each other. He kind of showed me the ropes in Indianapolis, had recruited there for a long time. And uh, it really, honestly, since that point, um, we, we became really good friends. And uh, we actually uh, worked together in uh, 2015 and 16 at the University of Wyoming. Um, I remember sitting in my office, our, our safeties coach had left and uh, Coach Bull came down to my office and uh, shut the door and said, uh, hey, can you tell me about this Kurt Mallory guy? And uh, so I, 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 you know, talked a lot about coach and, uh, you know, we uh, we ended up hiring him, worked with him for two years. And then uh, he ended up getting the job here. So then um, six, I guess, probably five, six years later, ended up getting the opportunity to work for him now. Well, Mike, it's getting tougher. But if young people are watching this, young college coaches, the fraternity <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> and it's so much of connections and relationships. And I tell young guys all the time, if you have a chance to talk to a college coach at a clinic, you go up, you wait, you introduce yourself, you ask, say a couple of things, maybe ask him a question and say, well, coach, I'm going to let you go now. Thank you for talking to me. Don't you keep talking because you, you end the conversation. Yeah. And that'll make the city, you're, you're not a fan, you know, you're, you're trying to make a connection. So I think it's huge. I don't know. I, I think so. I, I, I completely agree with you, John. Uh, you know, it's, you know, I look back at my, at, you know, so far in my career and uh, some of the opportunities that, uh, that I've been provided, uh, you know, when I, when I got hired on at University of Wyoming, I didn't know Craig Bull. He was coming from uh, North Dakota State. Uh, I just won his uh, third straight national championship, got the job at Wyoming. Um, that was in 2000. That was December 2013. And, and now you rewind back to uh, June of 2005. Um, I, I was a young GA and uh, just trying to uh, make as many connections as I could. So a little bit different back then because uh, the, the, the emphasis of the one day camps wasn't as as prevalent as now. Right. But. But uh, I, I went on a 22-day uh, <laughs> um, going across the country working camps trip, basically. Oh. Uh, and uh, I, you know, and one of the camps I worked at was the uh, University of Nebraska quarterback camp. Uh, Bill Callahan had just got gotten the job. Uh, Jay Norvell, now the head coach at Colorado State, was the uh, quarterbacks coach, offense coordinator at that time. And uh, I had a, you know, kind of a mutual friend of um, ours, kind of set me up working there, and. Uh, I met this young restricted earnings tight ends coach from uh, North Dakota State by the name of Brent Vegan. And uh, so Brent and I kind of stayed in contact, um, hung out and, uh, you know, throughout the years, just just really kind of touched base. Uh, we saw each other at the convention. We meet up. Well, he was the office coordinator at North Dakota State when they got the job at, at Wyoming. And um, so he went with Craig and uh, became the office coordinator at Wyoming and called me up and asked me what my interest level would be uh, in moving up to the mountains and uh, my my wife and I just said, hey, let's let's do this. And, uh, you know, that led to five years being out there. And, uh, you know, and, and it's and it's crazy because that's that's how this profession works. It's uh, people either you worked with or people you've known over time. Uh, last week, uh, you know, I had a friend reach out to me about uh, about an opportunity at his university. And 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 I and I decided against it. But that friend I've never worked with, but he was the offensive GA at Nebraska at that quarterbacks camp in 2005. And so it's this it's still, you know, almost 20 years later and that 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 camp I went and worked those connections I maintained over the last uh, um, basically 18 years have, uh, you know, still helped me out here, I guess, over the uh, over the last 18 years. That's really good. You know, I've obviously I've done this for a long, long time, and I believe the same way with connections yeah. <laughs> with me personally. And I think that's what honestly put me ahead in the game. You know, there were a couple other guys then. But but the people trusted me, yeah. and, and trust is such a big thing. And and college coaches trusted me. Even the Urban trusted me when he was an assistant at Notre Dame. So go way back, and neither one of us don't have to name drop for heaven's sakes. Okay, now let's sell sell me on Indiana State University. 
So why, you only- why do I want my son to check it out? Three and a half hour drive, uh, full four and a half hour drive, 290 miles. Why do I want to check out Indiana State University? Well, I think the, the, the first thing, most importantly, is that, um, you know, I'm going to give you a couple bullet points. And uh, and I believe this about this place. Uh, the, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that you can you can go anywhere from here, um, you know, from an academic perspective. We offer all the every degree that you would like um, we, we offer here. And, you know, it's a great business school, uh, great sciences throughout the pro, uh, throughout the university. It's a great school. Um, now, talking specifically about football, the you know, everyone talks about culture these days and, and everyone does. And and I think that that's one thing that's it's hard to sell sometimes in the sense of, OK, how am I going to sell it to, to you about what we have here? And I'm going to tell you this, that that I wholeheartedly believe this is one of our huge selling points are, are the guys in our locker room, but then also the coaching staff. Um, we had, you know, in this in this transfer portal, crazy world. Um, that we live in today. Um, We had three young men enter the transfer portal after the season. Okay. And those three young men kind of give you the specifics of each one of those situations. Uh, The first one um, was a young man that transferred in uh, from a junior college and great young man. It from our end and from his end, it just wasn't the right fit. Okay. So that, that, that happens. And the young man made the decision to transfer and enter the portal. Okay. The other two young men were young men that uh, finished their their degree. One of them finished a master's degree, uh, but both of them uh, were were stuck on the depth chart well behind uh, a lot of other guys. They wanted to just play. And so they made the decision to enter the transfer portal to find a a lower level school that fit them. So we have guys here that that have that have been here that really enjoy this place, enjoy the way the coaches coach them. Uh, this is a player driven uh, atmosphere that we have here. Co- every every decision that Coach Mallory makes is is based upon what we can do to make to be beneficial towards the players. And now that doesn't mean that we're easy on them. Uh, you know, Coach Mallory coaches them, and but he earns the respect, he earns their trust by the way we do treat them and the way we provide things for them here. And so I think when you have a, a staff led by Kurt Mallory that that has a that is a player driven atmosphere, um, a culture that that we believe in, we're, we're going to coach hard here, but we're also going to love them up. And uh, and I think that's evident by the three young men that, that left. None of those three guys would say anything bad about us whatsoever. Yeah. And I think that when we can go into a home or go to your home and say, hey, uh, Mr. McAllister, this is what we can provide your son, a great education where our team GPA was over a 3.3 last semester, okay? Which, I mean, there's not many schools. I've been in places where we celebrated a 2.78. We had over a 3.3. So you're going to come here, you're going to earn a degree, you're going to get treated right, okay? But you're going to get coached coached well and coached hard. We're going to demand a lot of you, but we're going to provide you an atmosphere to be the best you possibly can be. Okay, that's really good. And then uh, let's go quickly, because I do have some more, much more questions. Yeah. Uh, you're you're in the same conference as YSU. Yeah. Okay. So that right away, Ohio people can relate to that. Now, not everybody understands YSU, you know, at Youngstown State University, but it's one of the toughest conferences in the country. Yes. 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 Uh, once, and I, I I know this. I believe this. Yeah. And if you don't believe it, if the fan check out North Dakota State, South Dakota. I mean. South Dakota, South Dakota State, South Dakota and State. South, and North Dakota, and uh, Eastern Illinois, and they're all Youngstown State. Yeah, and they're just so powerful. In fact, I my Mac friends will get upset, but the Mac schools won't schedule them. I don't <laughs> <laughs> they want to play them. Yeah. Anyway, tell me what level? What what's that? Explain FCS for me. It's. It, well, I, gosh, it's it's got. Well, we have less scholarships. We'll start off. Yeah, yes. we have less uh, less scholarships. Less scholarships. Right. Um, the difference it, it stops there. I mean, it's um, <laughs> it, it it is. You know, we 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 had to play South Dakota State, North Dakota State, who are both in the national championship game this year. Yeah. And uh, you know, national those, championship, national championship, <laughs> national championship. And um, you know, those two teams, uh, they do a they do a wonderful job, but it's just not them. It's it's all the way through the conference. Yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, whether it's Illinois State, it's Youngstown State, 
it's Missouri State, it's Southern Illinois, it's North Dakota, it's South Dakota. I mean, they're they're in Northern Iowa. I didn't even mention them. And and right. you know, the, it's a it's a pro it's it's a it's a conference that does a phenomenal job of recruiting and evaluating and developing young men um, from a football perspective. I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. Um, you know, I think when I was I, I can tell you this stat because when I was at Wyoming, I think there was a point in time our first year there at Wyoming back in 2014. Uh, because that staff had just come from North Dakota State, there were nine active uh, North Dakota State alums in the National Football League, right. and and that and that's impressive. And, First, uh, second round draft choices too. Yeah, and yeah, they had two quarterbacks in the top three. You know, I mean, it's uh, with Trey Lance and Carson Wentz, and uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's it's a it's a great conference. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a grinder now. Um, you know, we you know we went through it this year, and. Uh, you know, we had to go to Northern Iowa and go play them at, at six o'clock at night. And and that's a that's a tough place to play in their dome and then come back home and play North Dakota State, who's the defending national champs. And, you know, and, and lost a game by six points. And and so it, week to week, the, this conference does a great job in, in, in scheme. Uh, it's a it's a very diverse conference when it comes to the schematics that you see week to week. Um, it's a well coached conference, uh, extremely well coached conference. And it's a conference that. Uh, you know, there's going to be multiple players. You know, there's going to be a, a tackle from North Dakota State that's probably going to be a first round draft pick. One of the first tight ends off the board is going to be the young man from uh, South Dakota State. And then there's a lot of other good players there, too. So it's, uh, it's, know, a, it's a great conference. Mike, the thing that I guess to make it easier is it's between, it's not Division Two at all, mm. but it, it, technically it'd be the MAC. The power, the power five family of five, I call it. Yeah. The, uh, group of five, and then it would be you guys. Yeah. Am I right there? I mean, yeah. right under that. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, right, 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 right under that. Right. You know, it's uh, you know, because it, you know, the, those I, those teams. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, and, and and a lot of teams, you know, they they've they've went into you know other other levels, whether it's you know mid you know group of five or or power five. Uh, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, uh, South Dakota, I think it was South Dakota State went to Iowa and beat them. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, well, don't you play Purdue? Yeah. yeah, we played Purdue last season. No, who do you play? I know it was a bad game, but who yeah. do you play this year in the Big Ten? Uh, we play uh, we play Eastern Illinois, who's um, uh, not in our conference, but an FCS team, and then we play uh, Ball State and we play uh, IU. I thought you played IU. Yeah, and uh, that's over the years has been a pretty good game. I don't know what it's been recently, but it's well, hopefully been a it's a good game, game this year. <laughs> uh, you're recruiting. You probably do. You guys area recruit or do you uh, position recruit or both? We 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 start off uh, mining our own areas, and then we become okay. then we become uh, position recruiters after that. Okay, so as a you're doing your own area. When you bring a player into coach, when you bring a player into him, what does he want to see? What does he expect? Well, I think I think the first thing that he expects is that the background character checks out. Um, you know, I think that's. You know, in today's social media world, you have that has to pass. You 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 can't have character issues um, that are that are known. I mean, there's going to be some things that may uh, be brought out in a college atmosphere that you're going to have to you're going to have to deal with. But there's always there's always information. There's always indicators of of uh, future success, also future failures that are out there that you have to dig in and find. Um, right. That's so that's that's the first thing. Um, academics is a second thing, but we also know that we have the, uh, setup here that we can, we can, if a young man's a little bit low, we can, we can provide him an avenue for success here. Um, and then it's the play. Um, you know, we, we want to try to find the best players that we can possibly find. And, you know, so I think it's, um, those three things, how competitive is he? Uh, that's a huge question. That's a huge coach Mallory question. And, and it's, Something I've been, you know, uh, I guess used to over the years working for Craig Bull, working for Lee Owens, um, you know, Coach Montgomery. You know, that's something that uh, we want to bring in. We want to bring in competitive young men that are going to be great teammates that are going to make each other better. And, and and it's hard, but they have to love football. Got to love it. Got to love it. It's too hard. You know, it's, what's that? it's too hard. Too yeah. hard. Yeah, you, but those things, it's, you gotta love it, Mike. You, you you got to if if you know that's one of the questions. 
Yeah, we we ask that all the time. I mean, and and whenever you get a, a young man that says, "Yeah, I really I really like it," well, that's not yeah. what I asked. Yeah. You know, do you, do you love the game? And it, because it is, you know, like you said, Coach, it's uh, it, it's way too hard. Uh, it's 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 a huge time commitment. And um, if you love social life more than football, you're not going to be successful in college. And and I coached at the Division Two. You're not going to be successful at the Division Two level. No. So it's just you just. It's a whole different animal, yeah. you know. It's just a different animal, no matter what level you're playing. Correct, without a doubt. The other thing you mentioned there, uh, grades are important. You know, I think with grades, I I don't do it like I used to. But you know, is is a boy have a two point four? Now is that is the best he can do, or does he get and he gets to like a seven eighteen on the ACT? That's probably now if a boy has a 2.4 and he gets a 25 on the ACT, I'm a little concerned. He's lazy in the classroom. Yeah, he's lazy. Yeah. In the yeah. Okay, yeah. let's talk. <laughs> let's talk quarterbacks. Because okay. I know you've coached all these positions and stuff, but tell me about quarterbacks. What do you look for, Mike? Well, I, I, you know, and let's let's be honest. If it, if it makes it to my desk, it, the young man is showing the ability to throw football. You know that that's. That's that's if, if it, one of our assistant coaches passes to me, there's there's OK, he can pass. I, I believe he can be a you know a good college quarterback by the way he throws it. Um, so, OK, so now it's my job to dive in. And so I, I'm looking for accuracy uh, without a doubt, because if a young man's inaccurate at the high school level, it, it's not going to magically happen, you know, at my level. And so I you have to see accuracy and. You want to see you want to see some arm talent where you know he's he shows the velocity to be able to make the throws all across the field. Um, I think that you know still sticking with the physical traits. I, I like I like guys that show some athleticism um, yeah. because I, I do believe that uh, you know in, in the college game, if you have the threat of quarterback run, that makes you better. Yeah. And I'm not sure. looking. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to run zone read every time, but uh, if if we have the threat of that. Um, where we show it every once in a while in situations that, that I think that makes you better as an offense. Um, but I, but I think that the, the, when you start flipping that over also from the intangible perspective, um, you, you need to have a guy that's high character. Um, th th that guy's the extension of us in the locker room and he's the extension of us when, when on the weekends, um, you need a guy that's, that's a high character kid that you trust. And I want to see, one of the big things I use for an evaluation, whether I was coaching another position, I was looking at quarterbacks or I'm the quarterback's coach. I want to see how he interacts in a competitive situation with his teammates. And and I think that that's one thing that, you know, I remember going back to when I was in high school, that one particular school would not offer me until they came to see me practice and or excuse me, came to see me in a game. And uh -huh. at Van Wert and uh, Van Wert High School, uh, they were there at that stadium and I didn't know where he was at, but I knew he was there that night. And he said that he was by the by the sidelines watching everything that I did. You know how I interacted with the coaches coming off the field, how I interacted with my teammates when when I threw an incompletion. How did I how did I react? And, and that's something that's always stuck with me throughout the years. So you know I, I try to gather as much information um, from a camp setting as I possibly can. I want to see him interact with other campers. And but if I can get out and see a young man uh, go and compete, you know, in a game. Uh, that's a, just in such an invaluable uh, uh, recruiting tool, and it's a way that I have to I have to see that for before we offer. Well, I, uh, but I've only been in the press box once in 35, 33 years. Okay, I hated the press box. Yeah. I never, and I said, no, I want to be on the sidelines. Yeah, because I want to be on the sidelines. I agree with everything you've said, and I sometimes I don't think quarterback prospects understand that. I, th I think it's fair. That somebody's watching all those things. And, and, you know, you know, there's another thing on Twitter. I put on there a couple days ago. I said, all these kids get up there and they throw, they throw the fades or the bombs, fades and the bombs. I said, I don't want to see that. Good yeah. coach. You want to see how the ball gets out. Yeah. See if, if you can spin it at 17, if you can throw a curl, if you can throw the, yeah. you know, the drag, all that stuff. And I said, the other thing is, all this, and I know it's important, all the footwork these guys do, these drills, throw the football. <laughs> you can either run or you can. Yeah. You know, man, you know, throw the football. Let's see. If I'm going to spend my time, I know it sounds arrogant, but I want to see you throw the football. 
I'm yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I, I, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's good to, to develop, you know, all the drills without a doubt, because there's, you know, I've got a son that's a freshman in high school and we, and we do, we do a lot of those footwork drills, right. but, but and, a lot. And, and if his arms a little sore one day, or we, we got a couple of good days or he threw with his team that day, we'll do some footwork drills at night. Right. But, I, but I, I think you're right with, you are right with the film. Um, you know, I I watched a young man last week that the first 18 throws were were fade balls. Were the okay, I I got know. it. I want I want to see it. I want to see it move and evade. You know, a little bit and and step up in the pocket. I want to see. I want to see you rip a slant. I want to see you rip a curl. Okay, I want to see you see the next window and 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 understand. I want to see that I that you show me the ability that you understand football. Yeah. And so I, I there there are a lot of things that on film that that but 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 also though I think that. You know, you can't fault a young man for that because, um, you know, when something like, you know, he just doesn't know. Well, that's that's also my job to be patient yeah. and go through the 18 throws and, and then see it, then see what I want to see, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. So the running backs once I told a running back, I said, if you if you if you were ever on the kickoff, I said, show you going down on the kickoff and making the tackle or just blowing somebody up. Because Absolutely. Nobody said that's not running the ball. I said, that tells me a lot, buddy. A yeah, lot. There's, there's, there's no question. And, and I would say that I would, you know, John to echo that whether you're a receiver, if they're, I don't care what position you play. If right. you're an offensive skill kid and, yeah. and, and you show a, a play of you being physical, yeah. put it on your film. I, because yeah. the one thing that young men don't realize at times is, you know, we, you may play high school wide receiver, but if you've got great feet, great feet, and you can run, <laughs> there's guys are going to flip you over to the other side of the ball and go play corner. I mean, it's quarterbacks become linebackers. I mean, I got recruited as a linebacker. I, I never played it down at defense, you yeah. know, but, but, but young men don't, don't understand that. and just opens up more possibilities for them. I think you were short and, and slow. I think that's probably the problem. Oh, I, I <laughs> totally disagree with you. I'm <laughs> yeah. You know that, Coach. Yeah. Coach, Mike Bath, I really appreciate you taking the time. We're, we're, it's gone long, but it was a great, informative interview, and I well, appreciate that. Okay. I appreciate you, John, man. It's always, uh, it's always my pleasure. All right, bud? Okay.